بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We commence with the praises of Allah the one who created us the one who nourishes us and the one who asks nothing of us except to pray to him وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The reason we were created and I did not create mankind and jinn kind meaning Allah did not create us and the jinn kind except to worship him we then send our salutations upon Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then I greet you all As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Subhanallah, when we look at the world today, there is many, many problems, there are many issues, many challenges we face. We as youth, we, the elderly, the middle-aged people, everybody faces their own personal challenges. They could be facing a depression, they could be facing a, a, a major trauma, they could be facing financial problems. They could be facing mental problems. Where do we find our solutions? Subhanallah. I know of people who faced problems and the problems were so great. They looked into the Quran and that is where they found the solutions. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu istaeenu bilsabri wassalaah Oh you who believe, seek help. Where do you seek help? Bilsabri wassalaah In with patience and with salah, with prayer. That is where your help is gonna come from. You can go on to your musalla. It is very simple. Open your sajjada, open your musalla or even go to somewhere where it's clean. 
go into sujood rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches to us that he says aqrabu ma yaqulu al abd you know the closest uh, a slave is to his lord is where in sujood how are we going to get into sujood is by praying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it so simple for us to get closer to him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us wa iqam as salah to pray and stand in salah for allah but do we know that there is more benefits than jannah we can get ben- jannah of course is the greatest benefit of fulfilling our duty towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not that allah is in need of us praying to him praying to allah but we in need of allah's uh, protection and allah's help coming from that salah subhanallah rabbil alamin the rewards we can get from just praying our five daily salah imagine uh, uh, nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never went back to allah and said bring it less bring it less we would have been bring 500 salah we would have bring 50 salah but yet allah is so merciful allah is only giving us five salah to pray number one we get khushu' we get you know we get that sense of you are praying to your lord he can allah can give us anything we need anything we want we just need to ask that is one solution to our problem and it is the number one solution to all our problem it is to call and unto allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah hayyun la yamut allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never sleeps allah you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can call upon allah 24/7 from now till the time you die you can just raise your hands you can go into sujood allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says walillahi al-asma'u al-husna fad'uhu biha you know allah has a most beautiful of name so invoke him in it when you in sujood say ya rahman ya rahim stand in the middle of the night do your fajr your dhuhr your asr your maghrib your isha ask allah and then verily the help will come because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri was salah seek help from in with patience and with prayer prayer unto whom prayer unto allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning your five daily salahs and i hope this message can inshallah ta'ala be the start to a chain reaction of our problems being solved through only one way and through the main way is connecting and asking our lord to help us through all of our problems may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the khair in this world and in the next اقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك hello shaman here uh, i'm a student from china and the thing about china is it's a non muslim country it's not big on prayer and it also follows the american system of the week where fridays are also a weekday So that means there's a high chance that I'm not going to uh, get get to go to Jumu'ah prayer unless uh, I set a time of, aside for it. Since I'm also a med student, my life is my studies are pretty hectic and that also gives me lesser time. But for the past few semesters, I've been making sure that I get a little time on Friday to go and pray. Now this little time that I get, make sure that out of all the stress that I feel throughout the week I can just melt it away just by going to prayer for one hour, just one hour, and all my stress just leaves my body for like that one hour. And my advice on uh, on prayer is that we are so blessed to have all four limbs working, uh, no lasting illnesses, and we're not bedridden. We are, we don't have any problems. So why not just go to the mosque, pray, or even if you don't go to the mosque. let's say you pray at home you just go pray and make sure you pray because there are so many people who cannot pray I've been in canada in august 2019 and i left behind my parents to start a whole new life to study here and it was definitely uh, a situation which i had to adapt to i faced a lot of challenges and issues especially religiously and a lot of personal issues and um, i know a lot of people uh, face these type of issues especially ones coming from uae leaving behind everything in UAE I was born in UAE and I grew up in UAE my whole life 18 years of my life and in growing up in UAE I had my parents there to encourage me to practice good muslim behaviors and practice 
and uh, I had encouragement from them. I mosques were everywhere. Azan, you could hear it. So it was it was easy to to do the things a Muslim should do: praying five times a day and having good behavior. And I feel like coming to Canada, especially with the added responsibility of everything, your studies, uh, new things you have to handle, it's very difficult. And uh, especially thinking that you can't fit into your schedule. One advice I would give to everyone who's in Canada or any other foreign country that have come to study to, uh, it is very, very important to maintain your salah, uh, to, uh, to improve your iman, to improve your deen. Uh, I think especially God's going to be the one to guide you. You may feel very lonely in Canada or any other foreign country uh, where you're not used to the environment. Uh, so I would suggest that uh, you try to fit, fit your whole day around your salah. Let salah be the pillar of your day. And uh, for me personally, when I came to Canada, especially during the winter, uh, making friends was hard for me. I struggled with loneliness. And I felt like there was no one, uh, no one around me. Even when I used to talk with my parents, I used to feel quite lonely. And I feel like uh, praying salah consistently and connecting with uh, Allah was uh, the only way I could keep going. I feel like someone was there for me, helping me. So to those who are going to be in my situation, I, I would suggest to, to be consistent with your salah, to, to never falter, to never miss prayers, as it's going to get even harder in, uh, when you go abroad to study. So just start start praying now. Don't, don't neglect it. It is the most important thing in your life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Musa Abdul Alim. We just want to talk about some of the struggles that we have in our lives, and it can be anything from um, class, anything from uh, working out, or any type of personal activities that you like to be involved in. Um, we can have struggles in these things. We know that Salah is a cure for that. Okay, Salah is a cure for that because Salah is the key to success. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has put in everything good in Salah. So Salah is the foundation, is the root, is the seed of all goodness. You can't have a tree, you cannot have fruit, you cannot have an earth without a seed. And Salah is the seed, okay? And from this seed can grow many different fruits, many different different types of flowers and beautiful fruits from this Salah. So when you direct your attention towards the Salah, and when Salah becomes first and foremost in your life, all the other problems, Allah will heal it for you and cure it for you and take it away from you and lessen it for you, inshallah. And my advice to all the people who may be going through some type of struggle in your life, it doesn't matter what it is. Maybe a relationship with your parents, maybe a relationship with your boss at work. Maybe you don't like your work. Maybe you lost your job. It can be anything in life. When you have Salah and when Allah Subhanahu becomes the closest friend and your ally, the one who is someone who is attached to you and you are attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then all of your problems will subside, inshallah. This is a promise given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He must come to your aid. He must come to your help. But you must be consistent in your salah and know that when, when, when it's time to pray, when you hit the adhan, that everything is secondary. That is when you know that you put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and Allah must return to you. And we all remember when Allah says in uh, Hadith Qudsi that when you walk towards Allah, Allah runs towards you. And one of the ways of going and approaching Allah is making Salah. Salah is the number one key to success. The first pillar in Islam is the Shahada, which is inside of the second pillar in Islam, which is Salah. So please take heed of your Salah, focus on your Salah, and let everything else be in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. A salah is the key to Jannah. Okay? And it distinguishes us from those who are not Muslim. A Muslim is one who submits to Allah. And the way to submit to Allah is to obey Him. And one of the biggest obediences of Allah is to worship him by praying a salah. Okay? Can a salatu ala al-mu'minina mawquta. Allah says in the Quran that the prayer is prescribed, has prescribed times for believers. Certain is that. Salah is very important. The first thing to be judged 
on the day of judgment is the salah okay if it's good everything else is good if it's bad everything else is bad subhanallah the Abu Dhar he asked anhu, the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, what are the best deeds to do in Islam the first one is as-salatu ala miqatiha the prayers on their time okay وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah says in the Quran, I have not created jinn in mankind except to worship me, ibadah. So this is Salah. So shaitan's biggest concern is to take the Salah away from you and me. He wants us to, to be distracted. He wants us to feel like we're happy without the Salah. This is why in the Quran, Allah says to leave alone gambling. Because this is a distraction of the dhikr of Allah, of the salah, the remembrance of Allah. Anything that takes you away from the remembrance of Allah, it makes you delay salah. This is from the works of shaitan. Well, okay. Wazunhina. Wazunhina. Okay. Shaitana a'amalam. Wazunhina lahum. Shaitanu a'amalam. Allah says many times in the Quran that shaitan beautifies the evil deeds. So anything that you see that distracts you from the salah, this is the beautification of shaitan. He has beautified this thing. He made you believe that this will be, is better than salah. It will give you more joy than salah. This is more successful. This is more fun. The TV, the Xbox, the PlayStation, okay? Um, the social media, these are all forms of distraction from your salah. Because when you die, there's no social media. There's no YouTube. There's no Xbox. It's just you and your salah. How will your salah look and appear to you? That's, that depends on how you do it while you're alive. Okay? And the reason why we struggle with the salah is because we have allowed poisons in our hearts. One of the four poisons of the heart is your environment, your friends. If you surround yourself with people who intentionally distract their minds from reality, which is the Salah, which is the Yom al Qiyamah, which is the Akhirah, this is Yaqeen, Allah calls in the Quran. Worship Allah until certainty comes to you. Certainty is death. So Shaitan will make struggles. He has to give you ghur he has to give you deception Allah calls shaitan the deceiver brothers and sisters shaitan is deceiving us because he wants us to do anything to take us away from the salah the biggest most powerful most important thing for us is salah hayya ala salah hayya ala al-fala come to salah come to success prayer is success Allah had a diploma a master's degree a hundred girlfriends a handsome boyfriend a blue check on Instagram none of this means nothing to Allah it means it has no it has absolutely no value to Allah but Salah has value to him because it's a form of obedience and it puts weight on your scale of good deeds Allahu Akbar now the solution for this problem of us being distracted and us struggling with the salah is number one is have niya. You have good intentions of pleasing Allah, good intentions of worshiping Allah, good intentions of becoming a better Muslim. Have the niya. Allah says that He looks at your hearts. The Prophet said, Allah says that He looks at your hearts. Verily, every action is, is by his intentions. Allah says in the Quran, He will not change the condition of the people until they change the condition of themselves first. You have to make the initiative to say, I have to obey Allah. Even if your heart doesn't feel like it wants to do it, you have to make yourself say, Hey, Allah says do it and I'm going to do it. When you obey Allah, Allah will 
give you the, the sweetness of this obedience. Allah says, Allah says, fear Allah, he will teach you. See, knowledge is power. If you want to obey Allah, ask Allah for taqwa, fear, obey him out of fear and out of love, and then the knowledge will come. The more knowledge you have of something, the more comfort you have, the more certainty you have, the least amount of, di of, of doubt that you have. You see, when we have doubt in something, we don't have no knowledge of it. When we increase our understanding of why we pray, we remove ourselves from the environments that doesn't remind us to pray. With these two things, we can solve this very easy solution. You see, the salah is a protection. You want protection? You want to be happy? You, you don't want to do haram? Allah says, As-salah tunha anil fahsha wal munkar. Allah says in the Quran, prayer is a protection against fahsha, obscene acts, and munkar, evil deeds. You don't want to do evil deeds anymore? Pray. You don't want to fornicate and have a girlfriend or boyfriend anymore? Pray. You want to feel like Allah has lifted the burden, lifted the burden of your sins from your heart and from your mind, from your conscience? Pray. Because with prayer, there's remembrance of Allah. This is istighfar. Okay? So hopefully this will help you solve this problem of being distracted and the struggles of Salah. And the second advice is to have good intentions to change to make the initiative if you walk to Allah he will run to you if you run to Allah he will fly to you so you have to make the struggle within yourself the best you had is the struggle against your own desires see the desires are is a beast and if you don't control this beast it will it will direct you and take you right to hellfire so may Allah protect us and give us strength to control our beast of desires and put salah in our hearts. There's a verse in the Quran and you can turn this verse into a dua. Allahumma ahbib ilayy al-iman wa zayyin qalbi bih wa karrih ilayy al-kufr wa al-fusuq wa al-asyan wa ja'alni min al-rashidin this is a beautiful dua. It means, Oh Allah, please make me love Iman. Ahbab ilayyan Iman. Please make me love faith and beautify my heart with it. Beautify my heart with faith. And make me hate disbelief, evil deeds, sins, and disobedience. Make me hate these three things, Ya Allah. And then, Allah, please make me amongst those who are rightly guided. Al Rashidin, okay? Al Muhtadin, the rightly guided. Amin, Amin, Amin. Assalamu alaikum. I wanted to tell you a really important thing which really changed my life in a really good way, and I'm really, really happy that it did. I really fell into a depression because of my studies, because, like, I personally was like, really really bad in studies as time passed like my friend used to advise me my parents used to advise me to pray and alhamdulillah once i started praying literally all my life problems like slowly one by one all started becoming better a struggle happened in my life because of that struggle right now i know what is the value of praying i wouldn't be able to move on it was probably like a test from allah like you know i'm sure maybe Probably Allah has put me through that struggle so you know I can come in the better way of life and like you know Alhamdulillah Salah is really an important thing in life which it's you can basically say it's like a therapy session not even session it's like a therapy in your life if you do it trust me your life will be a million times better and while many people know me as a comedian and a funny guy uh, some people will be shocked to know that growing up as a youngster, um, I had a very bad temper. And a lot of things that happened in my life uh, made me that way. Um, you know, my environment, people I was around, things that I had seen at a young age. Um, and, you know, it's something that has followed me um, through most of my life. I've always 
uh, I'm an anxious person. Naturally, I always think through situations, uh, overthink situations. And um, some of the things that I faced early in life meant that when I was young, I was always fighting. Like, um, I mean, it, it was common because I, I, I spent half my life in Nigeria and then the other half has been in London. And in Nigeria, it was very common for young boys to fight. And I did that a lot. Um, I was very, very bad tempered because like I had older siblings but they were a lot older than me, right? They were much, much older than me. So the way our culture is back home is that if, say, I get into an argument with someone or whatever, or I have a dispute, I can get my big brother to come and back me, right? But because my brother's so much older, they weren't around. So a lot of the time, I would have to have a situation with somebody, and afterwards, I'd have to deal with their older brother as well. And because of that, just naturally, um, even though originally as a kid, I was quite quiet, um, maybe even soft, you could say, I had to develop a very aggressive persona, which stuck. And, and, you know, as I got older, it got me into a lot of trouble, you know, and it got me into a lot of situations that were unnecessary. And, you know, now as a father, I look back and you know, I think a lot of that could have been avoided if I spent more time um, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, because now I look at the examples of the Sahaba and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I see that there is nothing wrong with um, feeling anger there is nothing wrong with having that fire inside you as a man especially you know but it, it, it you have to have a balance and Islam is about balance the Salah is that balance because you know it's like you're bathing in a stream five times a day you're reminding yourself how mortal you are five times a day you're reminding yourself how unimportant the dunya is five times a day you know if you're too caught up in the world and you're too caught up in worldly things and perishable things foolish things you forget sometimes that this world is just a fleeting dream but when you pray salah and you pray in earnest and you think about who you're praying to and why you're praying you realize i'm praying for something that comes after this you realize that you're praying for something that will not end inshallah whether you know inshallah jannah does not does not end right so you're praying for these things that are beyond what is around you the physical and whatever it is that's stressing you out these are things that are perishable these are things that will not last tomorrow whatever is driving you to sin these things will not be there tomorrow. These things are all momentary. So um, I feel that maybe if, if I had been, I had, it, it was through realizing that the world is temporary that over time I've learned to control my temper. It's still there, but I've learned to control it, you know, because there are so many hadiths and ayat in the Quran that teach us about these things. But the most important thing, that act of humility, lowering yourself, putting your face to the floor for Allah, praying to Him. And understanding that all power and, and all occurrences happen only by his will. That really humbles you. And, and you know, when you have humility, it's difficult to be angry. And I think that, that that is one of the major benefits of Salah for me. You know, remembering God at all times, trying to stay God conscious. That way, even when I do get angry, I make sure it's for a just cause. You know, Musa, alayhi salatu salam, he had a temper. But he lost it when he needed to. He lost it in with things that mattered and you know a lot of our young boys today that I mentor um, when I'm not doing comedy a lot of the young boys I talk to today they have similar situations as me tempers and they come from similar cultures to me where machismo and aggression and these things are seen as manly and in a way they are but you know through salah and the humility and the understanding of balance we learn to control our aggression and we learn to be more reasonable and thought out and we also think about the outcome of things that we do you know because at the end of the day the outcome of life is the hereafter and salah is preparation for that assalamu alaikum everyone how are you guys doing hope you're doing well i'm doing average it is what it is you know what i'm saying rough times covid all of that stuff going on there's one thing that i would say is everybody regardless of who you are regardless of your religious status your non-religious state, everyone's gonna go through something okay that's 110% guarantee certain problems and hardships can be averted like you know with dua you do dua one of the three things like uh, if you make dua number one Allah will will either accept it straight away number two Allah averts a hardship that was going to come or number three Allah will reward you for that dua on the day of judgment so obviously dua and being practiced and can avert certain hardships but it doesn't remove them totally. Music and, and movies, these things just exacerbate the problem. And yes, you may be entertained for a couple of hours, 
you might want to listen to another track another track but eventually you're still going to have to deal with the problem your problem still exists it still requires your active solution because this dunya is darul asbab yeah the world of means that's why it's good to kind of train yourself to be in that habit that you do not rely on these forms of entertainment there's a saying that says that if a problem occurs ask yourself if after that problem occurs if it draws you closer to allah then it's a test if it pushes you further away from allah then it's a punishment yeah uh, there, there's one thing that, that i would definitely say and a lot of scholars and people say if you are to leave anything leave it but don't leave salah yeah no matter what you're doing you're doing any haram act do not leave salah people say oh this person's drinking this person's doing this oh look at him doing salah well he's getting <laughs> he's getting a bad deed for doing whatever haram act he's doing why should he accumulate his bad deeds by not doing his salah as well because he's going to get a separate sin for his salah a separate sin for doing that wrong thing so people have this very warped logic that just because you're doing something bad it means that you have to relinquish any good that you're doing because you're not worthy of doing it when we go for salah yeah because our mind is just thinking about this and that and we're not we just literally when it's time for salah we just stand for salah if we're playing a video game or if we're in front of a i don't know watching a movie or something that we quickly just do our salah and come back naturally that salah is not going to have that same effect because you haven't um practiced beforehand and that's why a good tip would be maybe a couple of minutes before if you pray at the masjid you should definitely pray at the masjid you go there go a few minutes early just sit down and just contemplate or if you're praying at home you know just just get into that frame of mind beforehand yeah even if you have wudu do wudu and just get into that frame of mind and inshallah your salah will will mean more and it will have a greater weight my advice would be number 1 educate yourselves Yeah, number one is very important because when you educate yourself, you allow yourself to have a greater opportunity when you grow up. Yeah, uh, education and uh, aiming to be self-employed should be a goal for us. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Abdul Had. I'm a student from Canada. I uh, just wanted to share a small reminder about salah that was particularly a lot beneficial for me uh, when I understood about the importance of Salah when I came to the Deen and I hope inshallah this, this reminder will be a lot beneficial for you for all of our brothers and sisters uh, who are actually struggling with this when I when I personally came to the Deen myself uh, one of the things that I had a really hard time adjusting was Salah uh, because on one hand I'm really really excited you know when I found out how excited how how important it is to establish a relationship with Allah the importance of salah and how important it is in our life to establish that connection with Allah. And as we know, the, the salah is the best means of reminder of our life and the best means to connect, uh, to establish that relation and, and maintain the relation with Allah SWT. But the problem that I generally faced you know, when I came to the deen was it's about consistency. So when I came to the, when I came to the deen, I was really excited and I tried to go with the five days of salah all together. But Since it wasn't a part of my life before, I had a really, really hard time catching up with it. And eventually what happened was it led to me, it led to frustration. And I, and we always have that mindset, you know, that it's not achievable. You know, this part of the Salah, for me, I don't think so I'll be able, I'll be able to make it. But there's, this is one thing that, I've, that actually helped me out and the, the whole outlook of Salah. It's basically we start Slow. So we start with one rock at a time. So if you look at our schedule and, if, if, and, and our life, you know, pick one salah that is easy, easy, easiest for us to pray. And then we build up upon that. So we start with first, first salah. This, for example, is Salat al-Asr. It's really easy for us to pray. Once we establish the salah every single day and we have completely like perfected it, then we can go for Salat al-Zuhr, the second salah. And then once we perfect that, we can actually move on with, with the five daily prayers. And eventually you will, you'll, you'll feel that you can actually, it's easier for you because your body and your mind is adapted to it completely. 
and eventually you feel the sweetness of prayer and you feel that you know be, you feel better than before because you have actually moved along with this is just a small reminder inshallah ta'ala it's just like any other habit salah is like any other habit and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is the Quran to establish a prayer completely and we want to establish something in life it takes time it takes consistency and it also takes a heart and a willingness to do it inshallah ta'ala as long as we, we are doing our best to establish it you'll find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be there as well helping us this is just a small reminder inshallah ta'ala hope it benefits everyone is to just treat salah just like, any, just like a habit you know give it time give it consideration and give it a due, a due diligence but also you should never ever get frustrated over the fact that if we if you're having a hard time establishing it rather we should focus on the consistency of it you know and inshallah ta'ala, we reach at a level where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us we can establish comfortably and we are in tune with our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jazakallah khair Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين نبينا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أحمد الله سبحانه وتعالى الذي يسر هذا اللقاء معكم عبر هذه البرنامج المباركة أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن ينفع المسلمين والمسلمات الصلاة is something that we all have to understand it came second pillar of Islam after the shahada an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasulullah right away came after the salah salah is the main pillar of islam the salah is also something that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in jail judgment as first question about your salah if your salah is successful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at other your good deeds but if your salah is not successful your salah is not complete there's no point of uh, allah will not look at what have you done in your life so salah is something very very important and there is many ayat in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about the salah and also in, uh, in the hadith. There is a hadith mentioned by uh, Samra ibn Jundub radiallahu an that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this, this, there was one night two angels came down in the dream and took Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the journey. It's a long hadith. I will uh, only mention the first part. So uh, he said two angels came down and took Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the journey and showed the punishment that people were going through in the dream. The first punishment he came, he saw uh, there was a person was lying down uh, on the floor and the other person was standing up. He had a big rock and was hitting uh, his head with the rock and the head was, uh, the head becomes half into half and then the rock falls down and then he brings again back. While he, be, while he comes back with the rock, the head becomes, uh, becomes together again. So that's what his punishment going on. So this person keep hitting the, with the rock to his head and the head becomes uh, into half, you know, and then it returns back to the same again. So the Prophet when he saw this punishment, he got really shocked, you know. He asked uh, the angels, you know, what's going on? Why is this person getting punished like that? But, I mean, the angel said, uh, just continue uh, uh, the, with, the, with the journey. At the end of the hadith, uh, the angels told him that uh, the first person you saw was going to punishment, that person, the person who was going through punishment, he used in dunya, he used to recite Quran, he used to know everything uh, important about Salah, but the, he recites Quran, he does everything except he used to sleep uh, prayer time, he does he does not used to really pray on time. So that's, that, that shows, you know, what kind of punishment is uh, for if, if a person does not pray and what, what is the importance of the Salah, you know. Salah and Allah, uh, every prophet uh, mentioned in the Quran came uh, and what he used to do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about, about Isa alayhi salam, what, uh, what he came up with. He said, Qala inni Abdullah atani al kitab wa ja'alani nabiyya wa ja'alani mubarakan aynama kunt. What he said, wa awsani bis salati wa zakati ma dum tuhayya. And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Ismail alayhi salam. He said, wa adhkur fil kitab Ismail, innahu kana sadiq al wa'd wa kana rasul al nabiyya. What he used to do, وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ وَكَانَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ مَرْضِيَّةِ And then about uh, Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلِيهَا لَا نَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقًا نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْتَّخْوَى So Salah is the main pillar of Islam. Salah is a relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you, if you don't pray, it's, it's like uh, you cut the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you ask to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, when you make dua, 
or when you're going through something, when you want something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not going to come through because you, you cut the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so my advice for myself and all my brothers and sisters, make sure you pray your time, uh, your prayer all, all the time and also very important uh, to pray on time. Because uh, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about hypocrites, you know, munafiqun. They also pray, but what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, إن المنافقين يخادعون الله وهو خادعهم وإذا قاموا stand up to pray or like when they go go to pray they are so lazy وإذا قاموا إلى الصلاة قاموا كسالا يراؤون الناس ولا يذكرون الله إلا قليلا and then they use, they pray only for showing off showing to showing off you know to be beautiful so and then uh, in سورة المعون الله سبحانه وتعالى said فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراؤون ويمنعون المعون so it's very very important because every every act of worship, every worship has their own timing, you know, that, that, that you have to uh, fulfill. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, فَإِذَا إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا نَوْقُوتًا For example, let me, ask, uh, let me ask myself and everyone the question that can, can someone uh, goes, uh, goes to Saudi Arabia and go, uh, go to Hajj uh, in, uh, for example, month of Ramadan or month of Muharram or uh, month of Safar, like different, uh, different month than uh, a month of the uh, Hijjah, you know. So if a person goes to Saudi Arabia in Ramadan, for example, or in any other month and then goes to Bina and Arafah, Muslalifah and perform all, every step of Hajj, will his Hajj will be accepted? Of course not, because he did it a time that is not time for Hajj. He went a, a time that does not time for Hajj. For Hajj, there is a time for it, you know, there is a day for Hajj. And that is, we are uh, we are in the days of Hajj, you know. So only, only you can perform the Hajj that it, it is, uh, it's on time, you know. So you cannot just uh, perform the prayer or uh, or Hajj or any act of worship. That's whenever you want, especially the Salah. You know. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said the time for us. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us the timing. So you must perform your Salah on time. It's very very important. But uh, if someone uh, uh, forgot or uh, end up sleeping over, but uh, Surah so Sallam also mentioned, you know, you pray right when you remember. And I'm gonna quickly mention uh, one story that. There was a man, he went to uh, his friend's house in Ramadan for iftar. He was an elderly person. He went to his friend's house for iftar and then after salah, uh, after the iftar, he was going to masjid uh, with his friend. And then uh, uh, while he's going to masjid, he saw a boy uh, in the house, elderly boy, you know, a youth boy. He's not, he's not going for prayer. So this man asked him, uh, let's go to pray. He's like, no, no, I don't pray. And then he asked, like, what do you mean you don't pray? He's like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't really, really pray, you know, I don't like praying. The guy said, no, 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 please come to pray with me. You have to go pray. And then he said, no, I don't pray. I don't have wudu. He said, it's fine. Just just come. I don't know how to make wudu, he's saying. He, he, the man said, it's fine. Just come with me to pray. So the man took him to pray. And then uh, Salatul Maghrib. So the uh, boy just uh, went and st- stand up to pray. He doesn't even know how to pray or anything. you know. So he just stand up. The imam was reciting the ayat. was really, really powerful. Uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you think that Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do you think we have created you just to just play around and do whatever you want in the dunya? But don't you think that you, uh, you will be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day? So Imam was reciting those ayat, Fata'ala Allah, Kul Malik, Kul Haq, all these ayat. So the boy was starting to shake and cry, cry and he just fell down and uh, he couldn't handle. So, and then after that, he uh, became really, really, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him hadaya, became really pious and started praying one time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us, you know, just to do whatever we want, just to play around. No, there is a purpose. And what, what is the purpose? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Dariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create mankind and jinn kind except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said, you know, the prayer is the second pillar of Islam after the shahada. After you said, uh, submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, witness that there is no one worthy of except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the right away what comes is salah. And also the first question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask in day of judgment about your prayer. So this is a small advice for myself and to everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the among the Muslims, those who always perform salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, you know, ala salatihim uh, the illa ala salatihim There's many ayat, you know, we mentioned about the salah, the importance of the salah. 
and uh, salah is the also success in this life and hereafter wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Say hurry up in Bengali, bro. Uh, Bengali, uh, Taratari. Taratari. Taratari Koro. Taratari Koro. <laughs> she understands. She's... <laughs>